to the system area or to a command processor. And you could like format reinitialize disk and stuff, but that's not its purpose. So you have to know quite a bit of commands. There's like uh, 75 pages of commands. So there's a lot of things that you can control, but it's primarily for firmware. And um, I mean, uh, you know, one other question that came up is, well, maybe I could actually write a little piece of malware and stick it in there so that we might drive. So there may be some plausibility to doing that, but, um, but it is not primarily for reading your user data. It is primarily for talking to the firmware and the, what's called app code information. So, uh, so in this particular realm, though, when you're dealing with this particular bug, it's called the pending bug. What happens is, if you were to try to copy a Seagate hard drive, and it would like read every other chunk of bytes, like you'll actually get, you know, bam, 120, then it'll skip 120, then it'll read 120, and it'll skip 120. This is normally called a pending bug. Uh, what happens is the data is trying to do wear leveling, and something went wrong in the firmware. And so instead of constantly reading your data and giving it back to you, it's tying up the processor. And the processor is trying to do this wear leveling process over and over and over again, and will not be successful at it. It'll never end. And so you'll end up spending like two, two months trying to copy 750 gigs, and if you're able to even do it in two months. Uh, there is a way inside memory on the device to turn off this process. And as data recovery company, we can read it, but we can't fix it. Like we can't like write it back to the drive and say, here's your drive back. Uh, we, we can read the data off by suspending the CPU pending bug, if you guys get what I mean by that. So that's one that you will not be able to fix, but you may be able to tell all this other stuff from a Seagate drive. Western digital drives. Um, Western digital drives have one particular unique problem. Now, sometimes what happens is you think that the drive has uh, a scratch on the platter. And because it has a scratch, you might want to open the lid and look at it to make sure. Okay, so we, we've all had talks about, you know, clean rooms and other stuff. That's a different conversation. But ultimately, the point comes down to I need to check this drive because I'm going to buy donor parts. I'm going to buy another head or I'm going to buy another board. And I want to make sure my, my platters aren't scratched. You can, you can almost fairly safely look at every drive except Western Digital's. Do not open Western Digital Drives because the head assembly is attached to this nub through the lid. And when you do remove the lid, it causes an alignment problem in the Western Digital Drive. And then you can no longer read. Even if, so if it was an OK head, you wouldn't know that. Because after you're through dealing with your other problems, you won't be able to realign this head. It's very, very difficult and requires a special tool that looks a lot like this. And there aren't many of them. Okay, uh, And this is about an $800 tool to realign the head assembly, and it's still difficult to do, okay? So don't open them. Now, luckily for us, Western Digital Drives, most of the time, both, both the new Seagate hard drives and the Western Digital Drives are both almost always a firmware or a board problem. Anything made since maybe 2006, 2007, 500 gigs, terabytes, up, any of those things are almost always a board problem of some kind. Not that there are no head problems, but they are rarer than you would think. They're almost always. Now, now, Western Digital has a new firmware board problem. They're not telling anybody, but it has a lot to do with this. Uh, uh, they have basically like two filters on the board, and one of them fails, and then it can read 50% of a drive, but not the other 50%. So it would look like it's a head problem, but it's not a head problem. It's a board problem, and that's going to cause you another problem. So here it is. Everything that was pretty much made for Western Digitals that has a chip on it that's called a U12 or a U5. These are a serial chip that's on the board that stores the parameters that are necessary for this drive to work. They are unique to this drive. And if you are going to swap boards, you have to unsolder this chip and solder it to a new, new board. Now, most people go, oh, you're going to tell me how to do it myself, and that's really tough you know, crap to do. It's really not. It's not as bad as you think it is. I literally believe that you can resolder, never touching a soldering gun, resolder this chip, maybe with a practice board first, you can re-solder this chip in, in under 30 minutes. You could learn how to do it, and when you're good at it, under 10 minutes. And if you have the right equipment, you could do it in under two minutes, probably. Uh, but U12 and U5 are the serial chips that store this data. You can unsolder. Now, there are other boards besides Western Digital that have these, but it's rarer for them to have them than it is for Western Digital. So the only one you can't do are the newer boards, the boards that have this shape. If you see this triangle shape, this is the one that I just described where Western Digital has a problem where there's these filters that fail, and basically you have to copy the ROM using a special tool off of here because you can't just unsolder it and solder it to the other board. So this is going to be one of the exceptions that you cannot fix 
So if you see this board and you think it's a head problem, it's probably not. But if you can read even one byte from that drive, even a single byte from the drive, you do not replace parts. You need to know what you got to do. And the tool that does it is fairly similar to this. And it is not a cheap tool. This actually is copying the firmware and the content from the board, and then we'll duplicate that onto a new board. So what, the way we fix this is we buy a new drive that works, that has the board in without the filters failing, that we can copy the whole drive. We take that board and this, and we copy the code from one board to the other, and then swap the board. And then we can actually read it. But we basically destroy a good working, you know, whatever, two terabyte drive in order to make that happen. We can put it back. We can copy the code, put it back, but there's always a chance of failure after we've done it. So, all right, so diagnostics. This is my fancy dancy uh, flow chart. Again, not expecting you to remember this, but this is a chart that you can at least go look at on my website. When you get to these red boxes, it usually means stop. Um, if you do not get to the red box, then you might be able to fix this problem before you get there, depending on the drive. So what are we going to try to do? The very first thing that I want to do when I'm doing diagnostics, I want to hook this drive up to something that has an ATA controller, and I'm going to use a tool called MHDD. It's free. You can download it from hddguru.com, and this is what we're looking at. There are actually, in almost every... Now, see, like, FTK Imager and stuff doesn't have this stuff. They don't show you these status lines across the top. You have a split in the status line. It looks like this. So you actually have statuses. You'll have things that look just like a courier modem. They basically say, hey, look, I've got drive ready, drive rob requests can be complete, and it can request data. But we also have status lights for failures. Every single sector that is on the drive has a breakdown for each sector that will actually tell you what's wrong, and it will respond to the correct equipment. Okay? So here is what a real sector looks like. What you know is a sector that you've been told for forever is a sector is lie. Okay? This 512 bytes is what you are copying when you are dealing with forensics. That 512 bytes down there is what you know as a sector. Well, the rest of this stuff is all part of the system, part of the drive, part of its functions. And they're all broken down into groups of data. So you actually have your addressing information, which is a particular type of error. And it will actually also go, depending upon how the drive actually stores bad blocks, it'll store bad blocks in another location. Uh, and then as you keep on going down, you'll have things like address marker not found, so you'll get something called AMNF errors or ID not found errors, depending on the type of error it is. So that will look like this. You'll actually see status lights over here on this side, uh, on the, over here, that will tell you what those are. So you'll get like abort errors, ID not found, uncorrectable bad block, um, and there's uh, address markers not found. Those are actually problems within the sector, but I've read content, but I have some other problem. Okay, so I'm actually getting to a spot where I can read content, I've initialized the drive, and I can check it out. So in MHDD, you can actually just do what's called a scan. You can type scan at the command line, hit, a, hit enter on this, and it'll basically go through. And if you can read sectors at all, or it reports any of this information to you, do not consider changing parts. Consider that there just may be a bad head or some other thing, and maybe we can still copy the data. What do I mean by that? Uh, there are some other things you can do too, like oscilloscope. There is an oscilloscope, and anybody use the oscilloscope, like a real oscilloscope besides a, yeah? So you can actually hook this up to the board, and you can find out in certain places what's wrong with this. There is some tools that actually have an oscilloscope built in that will watch the power consumption on the 5 and 12 volt channels. So you can see things like, oh look, my head is jiggling back and forth as it's trying to initialize. Here's my motor, and it's spinning up in a power, and I should see, you know, it just depends. So in this particular case, I can tell this is a three and a half inch hard drive because I have 12 and 5 volts. If I have a, a laptop drive, I'm only going to have 5 volts. So there'll be certain things like that where you can actually use an oscilloscope if you want to kind of graduate through the electronics components to tell that. But I can actually tell if a processor is in use. Like you can actually see when the processor utilization goes up based upon it reading a sector and stuck in that, in that pattern. Uh, <clears throat> so again, pay attention to serial numbers, model numbers. If you get even this far, where you actually see, like you guys have probably seen this before, like you mount a hard drive in Windows, you don't get like, hey, I got NTFS or something over here, but I get a partition structure and a drive. Well, I probably made it through the system area, probably made it through the initialization, and if I'm getting a partition and the size actually looks like the size of the drive based on the sectors written on the lid, I'm probably in pretty good shape. I can probably do logical or figure out what's wrong with the sectors and why I can't copy them. But it may be like a memory board on the, on the, uh, on the physical drive that actually is failing. I could copy them in reverse. Uh, 